power. John and I often look at power as a spectrum where you can think about, are you trying to maximize say watts in terms of your force by velocity, or do you need to actually consider the ability to produce a really high amount of force within a very short contact time, particularly in response to a high ground reaction force. So the example of being of like, so let's say a counter movement jump, there's a very open window to how long you keep contact to produce that force as opposed to say high velocity sprinting where your contact time is it's going to be limited. Yeah, yeah very yeah. like 0.1 second. And thinking about the transfer, I think particularly then too of like thinking about strength and having a foundation of strength or building up say power in that sort of late RFD stage, how much that actually transfers into that real early RFD and ability, particularly when you have a very short contact time and have to overcome a really high mm. ground reaction force. Do you, do you look at it from that perspective of separating out power based on those variables? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's sort of really a key focus of probably my research and my mm. students' research right now. So we sort of call them strength qualities, mm -hmm. right? And, and understanding which ones are distinct and which ones are similar. So when you know which strength qualities are distinct, you know how to isolate them and test them and train them and then connect them to, you know, relevant sport. Um, and if you know a group of the same, then you can probably go, okay, we can just focus on, on one of these because it's going to give us the same information. So then so to answer your question, you know, are they interrelated? It seems like they're, if you're looking at the, the interrelationship between all of these different types of strength and power metrics, you might go, okay, what seems to be revealed when you look at this empirically or statistically are these factors. You've got reactive strength, which is your fast contact less than 200 milliseconds. So your drop jump, quick reaction, quick tap, um, less than 200 milliseconds, that's gonna be a particular sort of strength quality and that's gonna be closely related to your sprinting. Um, now, different from that is say a counter movement jump, right? So you look at that externally and you know, people go, oh, that's, that's fast. Mm. But the, the movement time is quite long. You know, mm. It could be up to a second, you know? So it might be five times longer than that quick foot strike when you're doing reactive strike. Or like a depth jump, exactly, yeah, you know, in comparison. Yeah, that's right. So, and this is Warren Young's really classic early work is those two qualities, like the correlation between them is is pretty low, mm. right? So it's not as tightly correlated. So I think there's only might be 30% shared variance between your ability to do a counter movement jump, long, and your ability to do a quick tap reactive strength, mm. short or fast, very limited relationship. And training interventions over time, those two, the adaptations to those two qualities can be quite distinct. Mm. So you need to target one over the other. So there are two forms of strength qualities. You know, another one you'll have will be your heavy dynamic strength, which is you know, like your 1RM, your 3RM. Um, that's probably no surprise. And then different to that again is your maximal isometric strength. So we're talking about your mid-thigh pull mm -hmm. or the isometric squat. So they seem to, those isometric tests, which are still multi-joint, whole body, have relationships to on-field performance, that seems to be, has relationships to dynamic strength, but they're more different than they are similar, mm. right? And then within that maximal isometric strength, so your peak force that you might take out of that, you've got your rate of force development, right? And that's another question, something that you raised too, so the timing of it. So you, that force time curve, you're looking at the slope, you probably wanna get the early stage of that slope. The later stage you get, so let's say, you know, peak force can occur anywhere from, you know, one second through to the end of the trial, which, you know, maybe two or three seconds. But let's say it occurs after one second. You do your rate of force development. You know how you can calculate them to different time points. As soon as you calculate a time point beyond, say, 150 milliseconds, let's say rate of force development or peak or force at 200 milliseconds or 250 milliseconds, that really contains pretty much the same information as the peak force. So it doesn't tell you that much difference. So if you're doing well, peak force, you'll probably do well on that late RFD measure. Yeah. So what you want is something different. You want that really fast RFD measure early on to see that you've got a, a different quality.